what is your childhood like with having these two parents that are so smart? What was it like? Let's see. Well, I didn't was it like realize... psychological warfare the whole time. <laughs> um, a little bit, a little bit. Like whenever we had a disagreement in the family, whether that was my brother or me or one of our parents, we'd have to sit at the kitchen table and then sort it out until we were done. So oh, it wasn't like let there was no resentment allowed in the house, right? So you can have an argument and like sit on it or even sleep on it. It was like we're starting this out right now. So we had a lot of kitchen table arguments that so that was a lot. Just one brother. Yeah, okay. one younger brother. Okay. Yeah. So that was interesting. I think growing up, like learning the psychological significance of the Bible and all these mythological stories from around the world, I kind of just thought that's what everybody else learned. Like you don't really know that your your family's different than any other family. I think I didn't really figure it out until I was about 23. Like it took a while. Then I started to go to other people's houses and I was like, these houses are all, you know, white. We had 32 different colors in our house. It was, it was like a... Oh my gosh, it was a lot to walk into. We had what like 150 like, paintings. For, and oh, in like decor. a 700 square foot semi-detached house so in Toronto. Was it organized or was it just kind of like it was everywhere? It was or it was like organized chaos. Okay. Yeah. So what, it, it what was do you organized. Mean you're learning sure. about... It was like a hoarder status. No, but there was a lot of a lot of stuff and a lot of art, but it wasn't hoarder status. Okay. When you're learning sure, you about the, the Bible, yeah, what yeah. do you mean? So at like, well, Christmas or just I just remember sitting in the living room and talking, dad talking through mostly the Old Testament and how important those stories were from a psychological perspective. So like Job was a big one. Um, we went through Genesis and I think I was only between the ages of like eight and 10 when we talked about all that stuff. So he treated us like adults from the time we were little kids. It was interesting. It was interesting. I came home from university one time and they had kind of changed my room a bit. They didn't change Julian's room, but they were like, now that we have more space because the house was really small, they changed my room and they had put paintings of Lenin against the wall, like where my bed was. And I woke up in the middle of the night and a painting of Lenin had fallen Why over Lenin? on me because dad, like once the Soviet Union's walls kind of came down, there was a whole bunch of art. A lot of it was propaganda art that was stuck behind there and people there were able to sell it mostly on eBay. Mm. So he was like, this is insane and bought hundreds and hundreds of really amazing kind of propaganda -y paintings on eBay and then filled our entire house with it. You know who I also heard did that? It was Arnold Schwarzenegger. He like got the busts, the like the statues. Yeah, of we had people. some busts. We yeah. had a Lenin bust. So you it, didn't realize until you're 23 years old that the way that you grew up was so unique. Oh, yeah, n not at all. And all my dad's friends, too, were other university professors. So if there were ever dinner parties or something, then everyone who came over was kind of... Uh, intellectual and interesting in in a similar way so i didn't even i didn't know any business people like i only started meeting business people recently i really only knew university professors that my dad was friends with is that intimidating to be eight to ten years old and having these conversations with these people who are so smart and such intellectuals i mean it's a lot it, i don't think it felt like a lot because i didn't know any different yeah. like, i think what we learned at the dinner table was well, I think what was helpful was I learned to listen well and not interrupt because then you look like a moron. So not interrupt and to figure out when you can speak in conversation because the conversations were really rapid at the dinner table. So that was helpful. At one time when you did interrupt, if you ever did, what happened? He'd just talk over. It wasn't like you can't do that. It was just like you had to be very specific about when you were going to like sneak into conversation or you just wouldn't get a word in. What do you think your parents did right when it comes to raising you? Because you, they've obviously raised someone who had, I mean, and we're going to get into your your whole thing. You have a, a very specific point of view. And I'm interested in that because I have a daughter. They did a lot of things right. I think there, like, there were a number of things. Uh, my dad always treated me as if I could do more. So there's downsides to that and and upsides. But, you know, it was good job if you get A's, but like, they could have been A pluses type of thing. Ooh. And it but it was a good job. So you like we go out for dinner if I could get all A's and things. But there was always a little bit of underlying expectation that you can achieve more. And that's like it's hard, but I think overall it was incredibly beneficial. So that was good. And then I was really, really sick as a kid. And my dad, and it, this was mostly my dad, told me you can never use this as an excuse. 
even though it's a real excuse, like you're sick and you're having a hard time, if you use it as an excuse, it's just going to destroy your entire life. And I don't know how much of a role that played in me trying to figure out my health and get out of it. But those those were extremely beneficial lessons. Well, I imagine you didn't look at it as a handicap then, right? Not really. I was annoyed by it. I was, and I didn't, I guess, internalize it like this is me, which I think a lot of chronically ill people do is like, this is part of my identity. And this was always like, this is a handicap I have to deal with. And maybe I can get rid of it. You know, when, when I was in my young 20s, I was like, maybe I actually don't have to just be dealt that hand and live with it for the rest of my life. Why do you think there's downsides to that to particular perspective when it comes to parenting? I think I know a lot of other really high achieving people that didn't get a ton of positive feedback as a kid. So it's like trying to find the balance because I have kids too, right? And you're trying to find the balance of like good job and making them feel good about themselves, but also showing them that they're capable of achieving so much. So I, I'm actually happy with how I was raised. I think I got pushed. I like, I, I don't know how much that has to do with how successful I am now. Maybe if I wasn't pushed so hard, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. No, no, I, it's such I, a tricky I balance. relate to it because I, I probably had a very, I had a similar upbringing where it was like, yeah. there's always more to do. And yeah, so his mother's a half job. Not a lot of praise. Yeah. Yeah. But then I've been trying, like, I've but been, I never didn't feel loved. I just felt I like, know, me too. And I've been trying to figure out that's probably the best thing you can do, right? Because you talk to other people and they're like, oh, no, I was told that like I was enough for my whole life and maybe they're not as successful. And it's like, we, maybe that's a good drive to have. We had a conversation <laughs> literally yesterday and we were walking our daughter out of school and I said, you know, there's this, what's it called? Gentle parenting? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah I think that, I don't know about that term, but I, was like, <laughs> I, I, I just was telling her, I said, you know, the problem with all of this and making people feel good all the time and making people feel safe all the time is that you get into the real world and you're not going to feel good all the time. And the world's a dangerous yeah. place and there's real competition and there's people that don't care about your feelings that are going to do whatever it takes. And I said, our job as parents are to usher in capable adults that are able to deal with that reality. And I think I'm not passing judgment, but I, I just, if you, if you look at some people that have gone the other way and then their kids grow up and they are completely flabbergasted when they get into the real world, like, Oh my God, I can't believe this is real like why isn't everything fair and why isn't everything safe yeah i think then as a parent you have to look yourself in the mirror and say maybe i could have done that differently because yeah i, I view my job for both my daughter and son is to like usher them into adulthood so that there's the least amount of surprise when they get there does that make sense yeah 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 like they get and there, life like, oh, can get life. really bad like it's it's good not to be naive I, I like when I, I used to be when I when I was when I was a kid I used to get in trouble and we'd get in these fights and it's totally stupid but I always was amazed and shocked when somebody would be in that situation and they would get hit in the mouth and they would be so surprised that that was the outcome that happened and I would say well you know if you put yourself in these <laughs> you're not allowed to do that yeah, it's like they, there they, are they'd be, no rules they'd be like I can't believe like they, they, they could, like, there'd be this utter shock that like somebody did that to them and I'm like this is what reality looks like yeah right and I, I, yeah yeah do you get what I'm saying yeah yeah I got I got taught this is funny too. <laughs> Uh, I got taught when I was little. Um, so apparently my parents had friends over and my dad told me, you know, when you when you enter kindergarten, go up to the biggest kid there and punch him. And that'll <laughs> that'll show the <laughs> the class who's dominant there. It was a joke. Right. Sure. And the parents that came over were not impressed. Um, but I remember in grade two, somebody was bullying me. And it was a kid that like obviously came from a rough family and wasn't having a good time it was this girl and she shoved me against a wall and I kicked her like that was just the response it wasn't like cry because I got shoved against the wall it was like shove kick like hard and then she kind of that was it mm -hmm. there was no sure. more bullying she was just kind of like yeah okay respect you so there is something to being taught to to act that way for sure yeah, I mean, I have a theory that the reason so many people bully so many more people online and talk so much is because we've gotten to this place where people don't have those interactions anymore. It's like you're just taught to accept bad things and you're 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 taught to not stand up for yourself because you don't want to get in trouble, or whatever. And I, and I think yeah. what like what I learned just as a young age and maybe others did too is like bullying creates other bullies because that insecurity, not ever being able to stand up for yourself, you then go and do it to another person where if you stand up to someone, it kind of like stops the cycle right there in the tracks.